Much like Irvin Penn, Dan Winters is one of those rare photographers who is able to turn their exceptional talents to a broad range of subject matter. In addition to his celebrity portraiture, Winters creates scientific photography where he explores themes like space and aeronautics. He also crafts photo illustrations along with just a wonderfully range of diverse personal photography. It's a lesson to us all that photographers don't have to stick to one exclusive style. The photography that Dan Winters has created over the last 40 odd years is a perfect example of what happens when talent, passion and an understanding of the craft combine. Let's take a trip on Dan Winters' road to seeing and discover this amazing photographer's work. How's it, how's it? Brave words indeed, comparing Dan Winters to the icon that is Irvin Penn. But I feel that once you spend some time here looking at the wonderful photography of Dan Winters, you too will start to see the genius at play in his fantastic photographs. The best way to get a feel for Dan Winters' photography, or indeed any photographers, is to look at their monographs. And when we do this, we can see the images as a whole body of work. And once we start doing this, I'm sure that you will also start to see the parallels between Dan Winters and Irvin Penn. Sometimes when you want to get a book, you have to go all over the place to find it. And this edition of Dan Winters' monograph was no exception. It was out of print for ages, but I found an Italian version. So if anybody speaks Italian, please let me know what Scatti Dal America means. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so this is Dan Winters and on the cover here, we, he sets out his stall already. You know, this is Sandra Bullock and, and it's a wonderfully beautiful photograph. And I love the idea that she's sort of floating on the water there. It's just outstanding. And, and it gives us a taste of, of what's inside. Something that Dan Winters does a lot, which I absolutely love, is he takes elements of the person and photographs them individually. So here we have Mr. Rogers, who, if you're not an American or if you're not like me, who have some sort of weird knowledge of, of American culture, Mr. Rogers was a TV children's presenter and he was famous for his cardigans. And so we, here we have obviously a, 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 the portrait of Mr. Rogers on the left-hand side and then his famous cardigan, which was an iconic cardigan. And you see this quite a lot in Dan Winters' work where he takes the two elements of, of somebody, the, the personality of them, plus their, their iconography. I don't know if that's quite the right expression, but the thing that makes them them and says, is Mr. Rogers Mr. Rogers because he wears the red cardigan, or does the red cardigan make Mr. Rogers? Answers on a postcard. <laughs> this is that same idea at play. We have a bald eagle on the right hand side and he's, he's photographed absolutely beautiful. And I, I will say this about all of Dan Winters' photographs, they are all exquisite. They are absolutely technically beautiful to look at. And I know I often say that technicalities shouldn't really matter, but Dan Winters is, I think, one of the, the great examples of somebody who puts care and love and attention to detail into every single image that he creates. And then of course we have this, this, this piece on the left, this, this, this sort of disembodied claw of, of, of the eagle. So again, we've got that sort of juxtaposition where the, the two are sort of working together. But that claw has also been photographed with, with a dignity and a respect. Great photographers don't just start fully formed. Obviously, they get their inspiration from people who had gone before them, just as much as Irvin Penn did and Richard Avedon did. Here we can see Dan Winters drawing inspiration from Avedon with his, this, this kind of, the way that these, these images are, are sort of composed and framed. It's very much reminiscent of Avedon's work on In the Family in the 1960s. And I like this, that he's bringing it in. He's still got his own twist to it, the colours and the, the idea that this is a roller derby team dressed up in, in kiss makeup and things like that. So he's taking an, an, a pre-existing idea and giving it little, little elements that then make it his own. So it's a reminder to us all that copying work, or copying a style, isn't necessarily a bad thing, so long as we take the base and make it our own. Here we can start to see why I'm, I'm bringing in these comparisons with Irvin Penn, is that Irvin Penn is known for a few 
things, like his corner portraits and what have you. But if you look at his whole body of work, he photographed many, many things, cigarette butts. He found interest in the most random things. And Dan Winters is the same. I have no idea what this, this is. It's a head of something. <laughs> um, but this is a lot of Dan Winters' work in a nutshell, that he takes things that interest him and he doesn't just photograph them, but he creates art with them. And that's a, that's a difference, I think, that's worth exploring, is that the photograph isn't just a snapshot of something that's interesting. Dan takes his time to compose a carefully thought out image. And you see this again and again and again throughout all of his photography. And this is a perfect example of this thoughtfulness about the composition. This is a fairly... I won't say it's a hardcore idea <laughs> that he's, he's come up with it, but it's so simple and yet it's, it's genius that I love this look of, you know, the, the gentleman's here and we've got this plate of glasses that's giving a, a two eyes sort of effect. And yet it doesn't detract from the photograph. So it's an effect that makes us pause, makes us think, but isn't the basis of the photograph. This, this photograph would still be interesting without that little sheet of glass giving us a reflection there and I just I just love this kind of thing. These two portraits are a fantastic example of how a photographer's skill can tease out, I hesitate to say the, the word model in us, but the way that all of us can be photographed well. And I, no doubt those of us who take portraits of other people have heard the phrase, oh, I don't take a very good picture, or I'm ugly, or there's no good pictures of me. This is a nonsense. It's the, it's the presence and the passion and the, the ability of a photographer to allow the sitter to feel comfortable. That is the basis of every great photograph of, of people ever. And these two images are exceptional examples of this. Obviously, we have this, this lady here. I, I, I'm going to say the Navy. And I should know better, but I'm going to say, say the, um, the Navy on, on the left-hand side, and then we have a, a Marine drill instructor. And we both get this quiet sort of confidence that's coming through. There's nothing OTT about the images. It's a pure portrait in, in exactly the way that I would expect a, a portrait photograph to be. And Dan Winters has treated everybody, everybody who photographs gets treated with the same amount of respect irrespective of whether they are an actor, a musician, somebody in the armed forces, you know, anybody, they will get that same respect. This is again a piece of urban penness coming, coming into this, this photograph. This series of images here, or these series of images, are about aeronautical things, they're shapes, and he's photographing these things as, as objects of, of art, of objects, of something that's to be looked at and, and appreciated. And Irvin Penn did similar things with his, uh, you know, with his, his still lives and his, his, his cigarette butts and, and those sort of images is that a great photographer never stops wanting to experiment, never stops wanting to explore what they're capable of, how they can see the world. Dan Winters also does, I don't want to say photojournalistic kind of, photography, because I don't think that's necessarily the right word here, but certainly stories. And he's based down in Texas, and I'm going to guess that these are sort of somewhere near there, because it's certainly got a feel to it. And there's, there's something about, certainly the, the image on the left, the, the broken down car, I, I find really intriguing. And the fact that it's sort of echoed with everything seems to be disposable in America. So we throw away cars, or you, <laughs> Americans throw away cars, and they throw away bags of fries. You know, it's, it's, it's a statement on those. I don't know if it's too much of a huge statement, you know, but, but, I, but this is when I sort of think if you look at photography as a whole, you know, images, if you look at the, the, the McDonald's one on the right-hand side, it's kind of, well, you know, it's, it's a picture of rubbish next to a, a plowed field. But when you put next to this, this car, then we start getting more of a feel about what the photographer is thinking with all of his, his work. And, and that's something why we should always look at photography as, as a collection of images, not just single images. So often overlooked in monographs is the fun that you can have with 
images in their layout. And this, again, we can't do this when it's online. But here we have certainly an alien, a monster, you know, something from Mars possibly. And then here we have on the next page, Tim Burton. <laughs> it's a lovely way of, of breaking up books and, and giving little wry smiles to, to, to the reader. And if you're not familiar, uh, Tim Burton did Mars Attacks, um, which is a, a, a sort of a, a bubblegum movie from, from the 90s. And it's, it's a lot of fun. But, you know, these, this, is, this is why you should look at books, look at monographs as often as you possibly can. I talk about this connection that I see between Dan Winters' photography and Irvin Penn's. And I know some people might think that that's a bit of a stretch because Irvin Penn is one of these great names in photography. But when I look at Dan Winters' body of work as a whole, I see the same, not the same photographs. I see echoes of their photographs, or certainly I see echoes of, of Irvin Penn's photography in Dan Winters' images. But what I do see is the same passion, the same intrigue, and that, that drive to create photographs all the time, to invest themselves fully into the, the moment, in, into, the, into the process of, of creating, of having a voice inside that needs to come out all the time, just pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. That I, that I think is, is why I say that Dan Winters is the new Urban Pen. And this book is called Road to Seeing. And this, this is what I think makes Dan Winters an important photographer today. And much like Urban Pen, is the fact that not only is he a great, accomplished image maker, that he is somebody who takes care and attention and love and devotion and passion and pours into every single image that he creates but also he's intelligent about photography. He understands what he's doing and where his inspirations come from. And it's a collection of images and, and essays and, and work throughout all of his, his career. And you can sort of see the wonderful evolution of his photography, you know, over, over the, the years. And I'm sorry, I can't really open it because it's quite a, a large, it's one of those sort of short, fat, large books. But within its pages are, and I'll put some images up on screen so you can sort of see, but within its pages are the nuggets of gold. If there's only one book that you buy, if you want to improve your photography this year, then this is the one. I can't recommend it enough. It's, it is such a joy to see the mindset, to see the evolution of a photographer and to have it explained by somebody who's not just talking about f-stops and lenses. I would heartily recommend that you explore Dan Winters' photography. I've, I've barely scratched the surface here. It is so, so beautiful. And of course, if you are not familiar with Urban Pen, I will put a link up on screen for you to go and check out the video that I did about him. I would highly recommend that you look at it. Thank you ever so much for being here today and I'll see you again soon.